What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and today I'm here to talk about Warhammer 40k, more specifically, Warhammer Plus in 2022. So for a while now, we've seen what Warhammer Plus has to offer, we've seen what they've been kind of bribing the fan base with to get the subscription, and it's not good. Like, I think we know the consensus is that Warhammer Plus is just GW being greedy. And currently, there are a ton of subscription services that have way better content. If you're looking for anime, right now, Attack on Titan and Demon Slayer is just hitting it out of the park with 10 out of 10 episodes back to back to back. So Crunchyroll is there, VRV is there. If you're looking for some pretty badass superhero shows, Peacemaker is just chef's kiss. If you guys liked The Suicide Squad, Peacemaker just keeps the ball rolling with some pretty gruesome uh, episodes and whatnot. So HBO Plus is there, plus you got Rick and Morty in there as well, and a slew of other stuff. And of course, there's a bunch of stuff on Netflix, as always. And Disney Plus is just there for that Star Wars goodness, as well as any Marvel stuff, really. So, with that being said, should you be putting your money into Warhammer Plus when you have all this content? I'm gonna say no. Like, it's just not worth it. Because when you look at the shows, the basically the really old White Dwarf magazines, the model that you get, there's just not enough content to keep you busy. I made a poll recently asking you guys if Warhammer Plus is something that you've been subscribed to. And out of this poll, only 11% of you said, yes, I've got it. Um, so that's a very small percentage. Uh, about 5k votes. So about 500 of you said, I've got it. 78% of you said, nope. And then the last 11% says that they're waiting on Astartes 2. And I think GW knows that. Astartes was such an, like a game-breaking piece of animation. Uh, these guys made such an awesome animation that really made you feel like you were looking at a legit space marine ripped from the pages of the codex, ripped from the pages of the novels, ripped from the battlefield of 40k and put into animation and everything about it was perfect. So much so that it got millions of views, people were doing reactions to it, even non 40k channels. So that's crazy to get that much traction on this IP that we all love and enjoy. And then GW noticed and they're like, you know what? All this money that they're making, this could be us. Let's take it for ourselves. And uh, that's pretty much what happened. And that led to the whole thing of GW being, you know what, fan animators, nah. Do not post animations of our IP on YouTube unless you want to get sued. And then that led to GW acquiring certain animators to produce shows for Warhammer Plus. Uh, we've seen that with Richard Boylan, the man behind Hell's Reach, which is an awesome animation, really cool style with like the blacks and the whites and whatnot. Um, really awesome show. And then he's making uh, the Blood Angels show on Warhammer Plus, which I've heard is probably the best thing out there uh, currently. Um, but, you know, it shows, like, the thing that GW did by pushing away their fans, their animators, really hurt the community so much so. So, in that post that I made, um, a lot of you guys had some pretty strong words for GW. For example, Peter Hares said, GW really burnt their bridges with that one. Fans making 40k content is what kept me inspired and I've packed away my minis and will break them out in a year or two. So, it's essentially a boycott. Like, GW is not doing good things for their fans right now, and then to make things worse, which this may or may not be part of their, um, or out of their control, but there will be price adjustments coming for GW, which 
That's no surprise really, because throughout the years, GW is known to just bump up the prices of their models. I remember when you could buy a box of troops for like 20 bucks, and now it's like $50 minimum. So, it just sucks that it's just, like, they're, they're blaming it on, like, inflation, shipping, raw materials, that kind of stuff. So, basically what's going to be happening is that GW will be increasing a lot of their products by 5%. So they go to say that a box of Space Marine Intercessors will go up from 35 pounds to 36 pounds. Um, now that's one of the things that like we can expect to see. However, they're saying that books, scenery, and resin miniatures are going up about 10%, while Blood Bowl and metal miniatures are going up 20%. That hurts. <laughs> that sucks to hear. Um, because resin pretty much means like Horus Heresy stuff, um, books, codices are going to go up, like, they're already expensive, and especially with the debacle that we've seen, especially that I feel hurt me the most with the Adeptus Custodes Codex, is that the Codex dropped. I purchased it four days later, and literally the next day, they came out with a points upgrade, meaning... Hey, this new codex that literally you just ripped off the plastic from that hasn't even been out for a week is now outdated. And guess what? In the future, if you want to buy these physical, you know, books, they're going to be more expensive and they're going to be outdated maybe the next day, maybe in a week, maybe in a month. So that really sucks that like GW, I mean, I guess this isn't in their control, but at the same time, they do have a few bits of good news. And that's that there's going to be a lot of things that they're not upping the price on. And the other thing is that certain currencies won't be changing any prices. So, for example, if you're in New Zealand, Japan, China, or Australia, you won't see any change in prices. Probably because they're already overcharging you by a lot. And then they go to say that these are a few of the things that are not going up in price. Paints, brushes, paint sets, tools and a bunch of starter sets. Again, that's probably because these things are overpriced or they're keeping them low to be an introductory uh, product for new players. So if you're trying to get a starter set, that's going to open you to the, wi <laughs> the wide world of 40k and boom, you're going to start spending money because you need paints, you need models, you need codices. Uh, yeah. It's this weird snowball that just keeps getting bigger and bigger and eventually the snow has run out and now it's just picking up dirt and shit and <laughs> other stuff that nobody wants. And it just sucks that like, it's the way that like GW treats its independent creators with like political opinions and like charging them more and kind of forcing them to do things under their umbrella as we've seen with that non-disclosure agreement that got leaked a few months ago it's crazy like we love the ip we love these characters we love how grim dark and badass space marines and xenos are like the novels are amazing we got awesome video games coming out that are gonna you know drive more people into this awesome ip such as like Chaos Gate, um, we've had got actors, you know, pushing Warhammer 40k to being more mainstream, like Andy Serkis, um, Henry Cavill, of course. So this is only going to become bigger and bigger. And unfortunately, GW is like driving away its fans when like a lot of fans are also, you know, getting new eyes onto their products. So yeah, I don't know what to say, man. It's it sucks because recently I've gotten into finally starting my watch through of If the Emperor Had a Text-to-Speech Device, and this is gold. It's hilarious, the satire is spot on, and it really points out how silly and stupid 40k is, but since it's got that little mask of grim dark, it sounds pretty badass. But <laughs> it's very hilarious, I recommend you guys to watch it. I'm only through season one, um, and I will be putting out a full review once I finish watching it in its entirely. Unfortunately, they're not producing any more because, again, GW's like, stop! No fan animations, no satire. 
um, so that does suck. But it's still on YouTube, the old episodes are, and it's hilarious and it's really good. If you like 40k, I greatly recommend you guys to watch it. Um, you know, two thumbs up. <laughs> and I hear it's only going to get better from the first season. So lastly, I'll end it with just two more um, comments from the poll that I posted, just to give you more of a sense of what the fan base is feeling. Uh, this is by Sheridan Battles. YouTube and fan animations got me into Warhammer. I was looking into buying and getting into the tabletop, and then they killed text-to-speech. So no, I'm not giving them a cent till they undo all the damage they've done. Who just attacks their own fan base like that? Etc. That is a lot of what people have been putting in the comments below. It's like, GW looks like players want new models instead of a model company. Go figure. So many companies have turned to business practices that only have a dollar in mind, and that doesn't make a good profitable business in the end. It's self-destructive, and they don't get it. They think that they are untouchable, and it's a damn shame. Joshua Carter, completely agree with you. It's like they're saying, you guys are going to buy no matter what. <laughs> we can tell you flat out, prices are going up, this non-disclosure you know, non agreement went out, and still, they keep producing models, they keep producing this, they keep producing that, because at the end of the day, it sells. You can't play your army if you don't have the new codex to see the new rules, to see the new point values. Uh, you can't play the new strong Tau Hammerhead or the Storm Surge, or you can't play the new meta army if you don't know what's good without buying the models. And it's just a cycle that never ends. And we've seen this over and over again for years. Um, Gersh 1 and I started in 5th edition. We've seen the power creep. We've seen prices rise. We've seen people get mad. And we've seen it happen time and time again. So, will it change in the future? Probably not. <laughs> I mean, with as big as 40k is getting, um, yeah, I don't see this changing. They've done it time and time again. In 8th edition, when GW got like a quote-unquote makeover, and they started putting out Primaris Marines and changing to a more consumer-friendly stuff, Ninth edition happened, and you've seen how that just got kicked out the window. So, I don't know what to say at this point. Like GW did say, we're going to make it easy for you guys to play the game with less books to carry around, less rules to, to keep in mind. And then 9th edition comes out and it's like, boom, new rules. Oh, you need a book? You need a book. Here's a campaign book. We're doing seasons now. You need a book. So it's just like, damn, <laughs> that really didn't last long. So let me know your thoughts down below. Are you part of the 78% that will not be getting Games Workshop's subscription service, Warhammer Plus? Will you be waiting until Astartes comes out, get it for a month, watch it, and then not get it anymore? Um, let me know down below. And also, I can't wait for Lightyear. <laughs> Buzz Lightyear movie is getting me hyped. I don't know why. Uh, maybe because of all the memes of Buzz Lightyear being a space marine, but it does look good. So with that being said, guys, that's all I have for today. Thanks for listening to my little rant, and uh, let me know your thoughts below. If you do support GW, I really want to know why. Um, you're probably going to get attacked in the comments, so again, guys, be civil. If you support GW, let me know why. I want to see, you know, both sides of the coin, so to speak. So we'll keep the conversation going in the comments below. So again, guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you want to keep helping us, subscribe, comment, and ring the notification bell so you guys can get our videos every time we upload them. Again, we do have a Patreon page, so you can help us out over there. And as always, I'm the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.